Analog Star Mastering with Logic Pro X's Vintage EQs. Welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can add analog style saturation to your mastering chains using one of MIL's mastering templates. So this template is what I call an AB analog style template because you can quickly switch between the original mix and the mastered mix by ABing between tracks. You can also level match the two tracks via the gain plugin on the mastering chain and also add that all important saturation via the vintage EQs. As you can see, the chain has quite a few plugins, but that doesn't mean I use all of them. It just means when the template is loaded, they'll all be there ready to go and provide an easy way to quickly hear the differences between the plugins. And therefore I can quickly decide on the best sounding plugin for the track I'm mastering. It's why mastering engineers have extremely expensive consoles so they can switch quickly between hardware. So why don't we do the same? So first of all, let's look at the vintage EQs and what we can do to add a bit of warmth to the music. Here's the original mix. Okay, so I'm going to start with the console and tube EQs to add some warmth. I'll bypass the EQ and focus just on the drive function. Turn it all the way up and then simply click through the output models until I hear the sound I want sonically. Basically what the drive and output models do is add harmonic distortion. This is often perceived as making a track warmer and fuller and will help make my master sound slightly bigger too without the need to over compress the mix. When you're mixing or mastering, don't worry too much about which model you should go for. Use your ears to guide your decision making. Often the best way to clearly hear the different models is to fully turn up the drive. This allows you to hear the unique characteristics of each model. Some are subtler than others, smearing the saturation and others add a bit more punch and presence. No prizes for guessing which one adds punch. I'm going to start by going through the models with the drive set to full on the console EQ and then I'm going to go straight to the tube EQ and I'll do exactly the same thing. I want to combine two saturating plugins to add more depth and more compression style saturation. Mastering engineers will often follow this approach adding small amounts of processing from different hardware units which ultimately make up the final sound. I'm doing a similar thing. So already you can hear a difference to the music and you should be able to perceive that it feels a little fuller and the music has more warmth. The drive settings are quite high but it's not negatively affecting the music and to my ears it's sounding positive. The music is fuller, bigger and I've not EQ'd or even compressed the mix yet. The next question I address is what frequencies do I want to remove or lower? and what frequencies do I want to enhance and which vintage EQ offers the best color for this particular track. Ultimately, that's what I'm doing here. Adding saturation adds color. Using hardware emulations that are renowned for adding a particular color gives me more choice to 
take the music in a slightly different tone or direction than, say, if I was using just Logic's linear phase EQ, which is designed to have the least impact on colouring a mix. So I'll start by boosting the upper mids, and I want to compare the console and tube EQs. By boosting at around 1k with a lift of about 7 dBs, that's a lot, but it means I can clearly hear the colour of each of the vintage EQs. Take a listen to how different the two EQs sound. Well, for me, the vintage Tube EQ sounds much closer to adding that analog warmth I'm looking for. It could be to do with the ability to adjust the bandwidth, which of course is much better for mastering, but I think overall this EQ still sounds slightly fatter than the console EQ, certainly on this track. Now I've decided which EQ I like, I'll sweep through the bands to find the sweet spot and then adjust the gain amount to suit the music. You can either click on the numbers to keep it feeling like the original hardware unit, or you can sweep between the high frequency increments. This is great for fine tuning your EQ settings. For me, 220 hertz seems to bring out the upper mids nicely. So let's compare this to the original and I'll bring down the game plug into level match. Key things to listen out for are the track sounding fuller and punchier from the saturation and brighter in the top end from the EQ lift. For me, that's sounding pretty good. So let's now address the question of what do I want to remove? Well, the area that has quite a few frequencies building up is around 200 to 300 hertz. But I have to be careful here. Remove too much and the track will start to lose its punch and energy. I'm going to stick with the vintage EQ and reduce the frequency by 1.5 dBs. So how did I know how to do that? Well, first of all, I overcut the mix using the dip dial and then simply looked for the frequency area that seemed to remove the most unwanted low mid energy that was negatively affecting the mix. In your music when doing this, listen for the mix cleaning up slightly and sounding brighter in the highs and fuller in the bass. Once you've found the approximate frequency range, removing just a touch will go a long way in making a bigger and punchier master. You certainly don't want to create a hole and ruin the rest of the track. Constantly check and compare by bypassing the EQ, ABing and seeing if it's adding a positive to the mix. Use the AB template's ability to compare the mastered version with the original level matched to see if the cut is improving the mix or making it worse.
Notice how the music is tighter and more focused, but I want to give it a bit more edge by adding my favorite Logic plugin, the Bit Crusher. This makes any track instantly sound bigger and it's super easy to use. Here's a quick tip outside of mastering, stick it on a drum bus and it'll instantly make your drums bigger. All right, coming back to mastering, add subtle saturation by setting the drive anywhere from one to three dBs resolution to 24-bit or less if you want to go for a lo-fi sound and I'd recommend leaving downsampling to one unless you want to completely destroy the mix for creative reasons and the mix dial is perfect for dialing in parallel bit crushing. Easy, 1 dB of drive is all that's required and it sounds bigger. Notice how the lows come out and the highs have a bit more edge and grit and all we've done so far is add saturation and a bit of EQ. Let's level match and compare with the original. The track is much more focused, much punchier, and there's still room to do more. So now the mix is sounding tighter, I want to bring a bit of the bottom end back in and tidy up a couple of things in the upper frequencies. So first of all, I'm going to use a low shelf to boost the low end, along with a low cut filter to remove the unwanted frequencies below 30 Hz. Notice how the shelf adds a long curve, which is much subtler than one narrow boost. Next, I'm going to bring out the mids, where the keyboards and synth sounds are playing. This will add more fullness to the track around 500Hz. This area can often get a bit muddy and honky, so I need to be careful with the boost. I'm going to tame a ringing sound that's audible around 900Hz and has a sharp tinny sound. It's subtle and hard to hear, but it is there. Let me show you by boosting it. By cutting here, it will actually warm the track up a touch and make the music more balanced and allow the frequencies we want to hear to come through much more clearly. It's a subtle change, but a small move that helps the final master. In your music, listen out for unwanted ringing or frequencies that shouldn't be there and just give them a small or not so small dip, depending on what's needed. Finally, the upper mid frequencies of the snare were brought out to add more snap giving more presence and the 16th note synth rhythms also get a lift because of this boost. Finally, a tiny lift using a wide high frequency shelf subtly brings forward the hat and upper frequency percussion. Listen to how I've brought out the snare and the 16th note synth sounds adding more presence to the mix. Check it out. Okay, so let's now AB with the original.
If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and hit the bell button so you never miss a video. Thanks for watching and as always, happy mixing and mastering.